got an announcement that uh, from the first lady. <laughs> I get in trouble by a few of you uh, if I don't call her first lady. <laughs> she is the first lady though. Too. Yes, she is. In my, in my own personal life, she's the first. Please announce the egg hunt immediately after the service. So kids 10 and under should go to Children's Church. Hank, stay where you're at. And to get ready, there's a, there are all kinds of stuff going on for the kids. So if you're 10 and under, make your way to Children's Church. The rest of you get to watch the Ahab. Now listen to me. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Dean. The one who wanted to listen to me. The one. Uh, it's been a good morning, hasn't it? Yeah. Amen. You know, I, I read a cute little story about three buddies who were who were sitting around and one asked the group, what would you like people to say about you at your funeral? And the one guy says, well, I'd like, you know, I'd, I'd like him to say he was a great humanitarian who cared about the community. The second one said it was, I want to be known as a great one. People say he was a great father, a great husband, an example for many to follow. And the third one says, look, he's moving. <laughs> now when I read that, I thought it was kind of cute because you know what? Jesus is not dead. He is moving this morning. Come on. Amen. And he is moving amongst us. Some of you I didn't even recognize this morning. You probably recognize me either because you're all dressed up like, oh, oh. I got that a couple times this morning. You guys look at me and go, oh, Pastor. I didn't look. But I thought we were at a funeral home or something. I saw a bug outside in his black jacket. What is that? Yeah. It didn't look good. <laughs> Nobody wanted me to get a bow tie, but Donna says you're going to look too funny in a bow tie. Come on. I got clothes. I got clothes. Next time. Can you imagine me with a polka dot bow tie saying you're a polka dot? Nobody can get away with it, but not me. <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord. Just to get you an insight, I know he's, he's beginning the process of school. So if you get him signed up, at the end of the day, he'll be starting school. So he is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, the one who we thought they thought was dead is a lot bigger. Amen. And I just wondered what they were thinking Friday night, Good Friday, when they were sitting around and, and wondering what was going on. And all their hope is lost. And, and that, that unbelief that maybe, maybe we, we even have at times. And my prayer is that this truth of a single sentence that he has risen will change your life this morning. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Because that's the foundation of our faith this morning, that he is risen. And I kept looking at that story, and I read it. I read the story on Good Friday, and I kept looking at the different gospel, the gospel writers. How each one wrote something a little bit different in each one, and I came across the same thing with the, with this story. And in Matthew, we have two Marys who went to the tomb early on Sunday morning to finish a painful task of maybe embalming the body of the one that they love so much. In Mark, the Marys brought a woman named Salome with them. In in the Gospel of Luke. The women are, are not identified at all by name, but still it was a woman, and not men, who first learned the good news of Easter. Now I find that fact quite interesting, and I haven't really had time to look into it, but it is interesting, isn't it, that the women were the first to find the risen, the, the risen Lord. But the John's Gospel, the one that Noe read, is the one that we want to look at this morning. And perhaps maybe Mary went to the grave alone. But why did she go there alone? And perhaps she went there to care lovingly for the body of Jesus, but more likely she went there to grieve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, most of the time we need to be surrounded by a lot of people when, when death happens in our families. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have comfort in numbers around us. But I think it was different for Mary. I think she needed space. I think she needed to be alone. She needed time to, to mourn and maybe wonder what could have been. But curiously, when she arrived at that place where they laid Jesus in on Friday night, that large stone, which was still at the entrance of the tomb, was gone. And immediately she jumped to a radical conclusion. How many of us do that? Because right there, right there, we just kind of go for it. And hers was grave 
robbers. So immediately she jumped up and she assumed someone had stolen the body of Jesus and she sprinted back to tell the others of her discovery. But Peter and John were not content simply to hear about the news when Mary told what they had discovered. They had to go and see it for themselves. And for some of you this morning who, who are here, maybe haven't been here in a while or maybe it's your first time here, I hope you this morning see it for yourself. I hope you run after it. I hope you find it. Amen. Come on. Because that's what Easter's about. Yeah. And that's what God's calling us to. That's what we've been praying for. We've been praying for you. You don't realize the ones who who haven't been here for a while, the ones who are first time, you've been in prayer. Where you're sitting, we prayed over you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Because we know the hope. We've seen it and we've seen the power and works. We've seen healing. We've seen relationship restored. We've seen people go through trials and tribulations and they have this peace and joy on their, on, on their faces. That's what the Savior can do for you. Amen. And we're all searching for something in this world. And nobody, everybody is. Mm -hmm. And you included. And maybe there's some here this morning who come in and out every Sunday. And you come so close just to giving it all to Him. You've been prayed for also. Amen. Amen. Where you're sitting has been prayed over. Yeah. Some of your names that, that have come to our hearts, we pray for you specifically to meet Him, our Savior, your Savior this morning. Amen. And we pray that you're going to run to Him just like Peter and John did. They ran to find out about Him. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to know. You have to have faith. That's Amen. what God wants to have. Is faith and believe. So they ran to the tomb. Maybe out of fear, curiosity, or anticipation. We don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us. All they told us is that he ran. And I know when I was saved, I ran. Yeah. I ran to the altar. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all the answers. I was curious. I was fearful. I had anticipation. I had all those senses, but I knew that what I was doing and where I was at wasn't where God wanted me to be. And many of you feel that every Sunday you feel that. And every Sunday you stay where you're at. And this morning, I don't want you to stay where you're at. Because I don't want you to leave here another Sunday with disappointment in your heart. Yeah. I want you to leave with awe. Amen. Which is, wow, what happened? And then try to figure it out. That's the fun part, trying to figure it out. Because you never do. You just draws you closer to him and you just walk more around. Amen. So they ran to the tomb out of fear or curiosity. They didn't know why. John got there first. But he would probably been like me. He was a chicken. You know, he saw what was happening inside him. He saw the clothes, but I'm not going there. That's how I would have been. You know, I would But Peter was running right behind him. You know, Peter, he didn't stop. He just ran right by his head. I don't care what he's doing. I'm going to run around and find out what's going on in there. Right, even right behind the right there. How many would be like Peter here? Just run right in. How many chickens like me? We just stay outside. Okay. But Peter, the impetuous one, didn't even break a stride. He bolted into the grave and saw it was empty and immediately knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. They didn't understand it at all. And maybe they never will. Maybe we never really will understand it. But they believed that Jesus was alive. Yeah. It seems to me that this suggests that we need to understand, need to understand Easter to believe in the resurrection. We don't have to understand it, we just need to believe it. Right. I think this having to have all the answers is just an excuse because you're you're so afraid to give up what you have. Wow. Uh, so good. You have nothing. Amen. Amen. Right, yes. Praise. Everything you have can just go away in an instant. Yes. Right. Yes. Preach. But when you have Jesus Christ and what Amen. he did on that cross for you in your heart, no one can ever take that away from you, and it is with you always. Amen. Amen. No matter where you're at. Mm. But you know what? I think there was a coincidence here that the first clue to the resurrection of Jesus Christ was that the stone had been removed. And 
I, I keep coming back to that. I talked about it a little bit Friday night, but I think it's important because that stone represented a barrier for us. And when Jesus was buried on Friday, this giant stone was placed between Jesus and the people who loved him. And though Mary went to visit Jesus' grave, she wouldn't be able to see him anyway because the stone was in the way. There's no way she could have seen him. No way she could have involved him. No way she could have grieved over his body, touched him, felt him. All, she couldn't have done any of those things. Because that stone was a preventer from doing so. It was like a barrier. It was incapable. He was incapable of moving. Just imagine this big, big boulder disc in front of you, and you could not move that by yourself. And you wanted to get to Jesus. There's no way you could. You'd, build, you'd be helpless. Well, guess what happened this morning? The stone was rolled away. Come on. Amen. 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 By the one who loves you more than you think. Amen. Amen. That somebody, that one, that, that Savior, it's, it's, that, it's that grace. We're, we're, we're helpless. There's no way we could have moved it. We're helpless. We, we could have tried it. All of our days, we could have got a couple of friends, we still could have moved that thing. Yeah. But he did. Mm -hmm. For you. Yeah. And somebody did that for me. Somebody took that barrier away from me so that I so that I could come to him. Yeah. Somebody moved that barrier for you this morning. So you could come. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how far you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how you've done it. Because he doesn't care. He's forgiven you. Come on. Amen. Amen. And he loves you. Yes, yes. No matter what. And for some of you, he's been falling around an awful long time. <laughs> Whispering to you, nudging you, trying to get you moving this way. You've heard your friends say, let's come to church. Oh, I don't want to go this morning. You've heard them do you need to reach your I don't want to do that. You've heard all those things. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Amen. To you. Just the way, way he speaks to me. You know, yesterday I was having a hard time. Like, I got home in the afternoon. It was like, the enemy was after me. He was saying, you know, that message isn't very good. You have to change it. <laughs> I was thinking, wait a second. You know, I kind of sense this is the direction I'm going. It should be right. And, and I sat in the chair and Don was outside doing doing some stuff, and I was sitting in the chair by myself. I didn't even have sports on. This is how crazy it was. <laughs> and I was sitting there, and I kept thinking to myself, man, what's going on here? You know, and I started to doubt myself. I started to doubt, well, am I worthy to do this? I mean, I should just maybe just go in and tell the church, I'm done. No way. And the enemy was after me to, to, to do those things. And so I got my message out, I got my Bible out, and I just started to read a little bit, and I just sat there quietly, my eyes closed. And just ask God, you know, help me. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost here. Yeah. I've, I've gotten off the path a little bit here. The, the, the enemy has tricked me a little bit, and I'm going over here, and I'm starting to feel sorry about myself. <laughs> I'm starting to feel not worthy. How could God love somebody like me? You know, and then... And, 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 Man, you're pastor a church. How can you be pastor a church? What's wrong with you? Right. And pretty soon I'm way over here. Right. And Jesus Christ is hanging on the cross. Yes. He wanted to save me right there. Come on. And that's what he's asking for you this morning. Go to him. Talk to him. Yeah. Leave it there. Yeah. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I didn't. I got back into my message. I started reading the word. I was talking about what I felt God wanted to talk about. You know, I thought, this sounds pretty good. <laughs> Come on. I knew it wasn't my words, it was his words because it wasn't That's mine. Right. So believe me, if you heard my words, most of you guys wouldn't be here. <laughs> It'd be the first lady and me. <laughs> and maybe Bud because he'll bring the donuts. Donnie and I have a lot of fun donuts. <laughs> That'd be a lot bigger, wouldn't it? Uh, but you know what? That barrier, that stone between. Us and Jesus is not there anymore. It's been rolled away from you. Amen. Amen. Right. And when you have all those feelings that I just ex expressed that I had yes, just yesterday, he's there for you. But so many of us wait for him to come to us. He's already there. Right. Yeah. you got to reach out and come to him.
Throughout the season of Lent, we've been on this journey of stones. You know, every, you noticed this morning, no stones are all gone. And he said he would carry a small stone into worship with us, and that stone would become symbolic of our sins that were a barrier between God and us. And one stone stood for pride, while the other stood for somebody's dishonesty. And one stone symbolized fractured relationships, or other stones stood for the sins of gossip, prejudice, or hatred. And you all know, every week it was something. And I'm proud of our church because we truly, I believe, examined ourselves authentically. And every week, most of you came down and you laid your stones at the altar, at the foot of the cross, and allowing God to, to work on those things for you. I saw it every week. For five weeks, I saw you guys do that. It was painful. It was painful for me to kneel there, put my rock down there, and say, stop judging people. Stop gossiping. Stop being angry. All those things that each of us go through, I had to leave it there. And it hurt for me to look in the mirror, because I thought, man, I'm looking pretty good. But when I got away from the mirror and really saw what I looked like, I thought, I didn't look like anything like I thought I did. Right. And these last five weeks has really helped yeah. me, and I hope it's helped you. And I've seen some growth in a lot of you, because this last five weeks. But by the end of Lent, the altars should have all been filled with stone, shouldn't they? But they've all been removed. Our stones represented our sins. And we can't remove these by ourselves. It's the same way that stone was moved across the grave. Someone had to remove those for us. Guess what? Somebody did. Amen. Amen. All the stones are gone this morning. And all the sins are removed. And this is the ultimate message of Easter. That's what this is all about. That what we could not do by ourselves, God did for us. Get this part. No questions asked. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Yes. Yeah. You don't come to him and then you, you, you lay your heart down and he goes, well, why did you do that? He doesn't ask you that. Right. Or what the heck were you thinking, Don? Why did you do that? Right. Or why did you go there? Or why were you looking at that? Or what were you, what were you thinking? He doesn't do that. Yeah. He puts his arms out around you and holds you and just tells you, Wait, I love you so Come on. much. Yes. So good. Now, all he wants is some faith in him, to trust him. Yeah. And the biggest promise of all, he fulfilled this morning by, by, by being resurrected, rising from the dead. We get the gift of the Holy Spirit now, where he's with us wherever we go, wherever we're at. But every pastor knows on Easter Sunday that there'll be people attending that may not normally come to church. I don't know if for whatever reason you don't come or why you come sometimes and why you don't come other times, but you know what? You still have the same sins in your life. Maybe you drink too much, maybe you swear too much, maybe you get angry too often, or maybe you're just unfaithful in too many different situations. That may be even the reason why you stay away from church. Your shame has been too much for you to overcome. In truth, you're no different than the rest of us that are here this morning. Right. We're all the same. Yeah. I was sitting there this morning thinking, the church. Why the church? So you could fellowship with each other. That we need to meet often together so that we can encourage each other. And, and I know that Pastor Tony is going through some of the same things I'm going to. And he can encourage me. I'm knowing no way I can, have, I can encourage him with the youth of Maria. Because we meet a lot together. We talk about things. That's why I put the church together so we can encourage each other. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to get all dressed up next week and come back and celebrate the risen Lord again. Amen. Come on. Yes. Because we need each other. The world, how many in the world are trying to drag you down? We need each other. We need to hear each other. Amen. But today it's my privilege to tell you that the stone has been rolled away for you too. For the ones who've only been here a couple times, or maybe your first time. You may think your sins are too great to be forgiven, but you're wrong. You may think God can't accept you just the way you are, but guess what? You're wrong. Come on. Preach. The stone is rolled away. The sins are forgiven this morning. 
You know the best part of it? The Savior has chosen you. Amen. You. Might be hard to believe, huh? It's hard for me to believe, but I accept it. Yeah, amen. You, he chose me. Wow. And he's chosen you. Don't think he hasn't. He's chosen you. And I really truly believe that he's chosen you to love you, but you know what? I think he's chosen you to be here to, today, sitting in that exact pew right where you're at here and what he has to say to us. I believe that's a, it's a destination for you this morning. Yeah. There's an illustration I read, a story about W.C. Fields. I know Bud Hart remembers W.C. Fields. Global vaudeville comedian, right? Back in the 19, part of the 1900s. He was a notorious atheist, okay? Didn't believe in God. And one evening before the performance, an assistant came into Phil's dressing room and caught Phil's reading the Bible. The embarrassed Phil slammed the Bible shut and said, I'm just looking for loopholes. <laughs> but see, what, what Phil was looking for is grace. What he's looking for is forgiveness. What he's looking for is a second chance. What he was looking for is a time to start over. Well, Easter is the ultimate answer to that. No loopholes. When Jesus made, made good on his promise to raise from the grave, all the promises became reality. His promise to forgive your sins, his promise to be with you wherever you are, wherever you go. And some of you might not like that. Think about some of the places you've been. He's going to be there. But also his promise to give us eternal life. Amen. And that's not a loophole. That's a fact. This morning. We believe it. Because he is risen this morning. And this Easter morning we have an encounter with the risen Son of God. And we have a choice this morning. We can remain bent over with grief. Looking backwards at a broken past, full of sorrow over our broken dreams and our own failings. We can refuse to believe that Easter has any meaning for us or any power over us. We can di dismiss it all as nonsense this morning, as a fairy tale or even a myth. And we can refuse the encounter with the Son of God, and we can insist that He is just the gardener after all. Or we can recognize the power in the voice that has spoken your name this morning. Amen. You've heard him this morning. We can turn around. We can stand up. We can straighten up. We can lift our eyes to Jesus and embrace the call to follow him all the way to eternal life. We can put down all the things we are, car are carrying, are carrying, all those birds we're carrying, all the things that have died and go forward from here with our hands upright, our spirits rejoicing and our hearts alive. We can accept the grace, the grace of forgiveness and the loving guidance of a Savior that loves you more than you really know this morning. Amen. And for those he's been speaking to this morning, because I need Every once in a while, he gives me an insight. This morning, he's giving me that insight. There's some here that he's spoken to me about you. And you have a choice this morning. You come this morning not understanding it all, but believing it all. Yeah. Because <clears throat> all he wants today from you is your faith. Just believe him. You don't have to have all the answers. See, we can leave here this morning either disappointed or we can leave here in awe. And he wants so much. Why did he go through all he went through for us to leave in disappointment? Let's not go from this place of disappointment this morning, but in awe, knowing our Lord for who he is. He's the risen Lord. Barbara's playing this song. I want you just to ponder your heart just a second.
But most of you already know the ones that I've been speaking to this morning. That you need to stand up, you need to slide out of the pew, you need to come down to the altar, you need to tell God that for, to forgive you. Come forward so we can pray for you this morning. 